Hey, you guys. Um, so I am talking to makeup professional makeup artist, Wendy Fialo. I would go as far as to say celebrity makeup artist, but I know that's not how you necessarily introduce yourself. But she has done makeup for people on American Idol and other well-known celebrities, as well as um, one of her bigger loves is really working with everyday women, if you will. So peeps like you and me that just need some help on the makeup end. I know I need a lot of it. So um, Wendy also happens to be one of our Good Vibe Tribe coaches, which is something I just, I absolutely adore that we have so many amazing coaches on our team that have a wide array of professions, but it, it always comes down to like wanting to look better, wanting to feel better, wanting to have that air of confidence. And as women, we all get that from, from really loving ourselves, taking care of ourselves and respecting our beauty. And all of us are beautiful in our own unique ways. And one of the things I love about makeup is you can really play up your fun, you know, your fun features. Um, but for those of us like me, <laughs> we're not makeup artists. We have these brand ideas of how we can look amazing, but we just don't even know where to start. So um, that is why I wanted to do this with you. So before we go into the makeup artistry end, that was kind of a, a short introduction, but tell me a little bit more about um, how you got into makeup. You've been doing it for 14 years, right? Yes, I have. I have. So um, I think the way I got into it was just probably really common for a lot of people. It was like, hey, when do you do your makeup really good? Can you do my makeup for prom when I was in high school? So that's kind of how I fell into it. And um, it became a thing when I couldn't even do my own makeup because I was doing everybody else's makeup. So I looked like crap when I went to prom. So I was terrible. But, um, you know, I just, um, I started working at the counters. So um, when I was like 18, I needed a job. So of course I went for, you know, working in makeup and I, I worked in San Diego um, and actually in Escondido. And uh, I started there at the counters and just kind of went on from there. It's truly amazing. And here's another thing that I've got to love about you. You're a mom. <laughs> like, I'm a total I look, mom. Like, <laughs> I look like this and I'm not a mom. And I'm like, every time I connect with you, every time I see a photo of you, every time, like, even like a post-workout thing, I'm like, how does she look glamorous all the time? You oh, that's a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you really look great. So... Um, just some kind of questions to really help us out on the beauty end, you know, after these, these 14, 21 days, wherever we're at by the time I, I share this with everybody. But, you know, we've gotten to that space where we're starting to feel better about ourselves. We're starting to look better in clothes. We want to go shopping more. Um, and Sephora happens to be at the mall, which is a great stop to, to get some stuff. So um, some of the questions I have is, let's just start at like the base level, like foundation, because... You know, I remember as a kid, my mom showing me foundation and putting it on with a sponge and then I felt like it was so heavy and then I got into tinted moisturizer and then I just wanted sunscreen and I really don't even know where to start. So what, what do you feel like are your base foundation layers that you should really be looking for and um, like application tips as well as any of your favorite products or brands? Okay. So, um, well, let's start with, okay, I'm a really, 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 I don't care what what you do to your face, the number one thing you have to begin with is skincare. So it doesn't necessarily have to be expensive, but start getting into the process of at least washing, toning, moisturizing. At least do that. Um, there's a whole science behind that that we won't get into, but that's going to greatly improve not only how you look without it, but what you look like when you wear it. So once you've done that and you're taking care of your skin, then you can really get a good feel for what your skin type is. So once you have that information and you go into the wide world of Sephora or Ulta or whatever, that's going to be one of the number one things they ask you. What's your skin type or, you know, that kind of thing. So as far as that goes, um, there's a bridge between skincare and makeup, and that's going to be a primer. And that is so paramount. And a lot of people, when I worked at MAC, a lot of people would skip over. They're like, primer? What's a primer? So the importance of that is... Um, Basically, it is just the way that the that it's made is the um, the particles are just a little too big to pass the surface of your skin, so it kind of acts as a veil. The reason that that's good is it keeps your makeup on longer, keeps it out of your pores, and keeps it true to color. 
So it becomes endurance based. So that's huge. And it's, it kind of goes on more, you know, smooth like butter. So you're not splotchy or blotchy or running into issues of, you know, the color change. So that's the first thing I would recommend, um, no matter what you do. And then beyond that, you know, you've got your tinted moisturizers, you've got your foundations, and then the different levels of, um, you know, the finish within, within your foundation. So um, what I always tell my clients and my students is when you are looking to buy anything, if you're somebody that says, well, I think I want a tinted moisturizer, but I think I like the finish of a foundation, my recommendation is buy a foundation and then add a couple of pumps or squirts of your moisturizer to it if you want to go lighter because you can do that and kind of have the same effect. So um, favorite products? Oh, there's a lot. There's really a lot. Um, right now I'm really in love with Tarte. And I think the reason I'm in love with them is because it's a much cleaner product. Um, no parabens, you know, um, there, there's a whole realm of chemicals that they stay away from as far as that's concerned. So that's big and they don't test on animals, which is another big thing I like. Um, so, you know, is there anything specific, like a specific product you're like, hey, what is that one foundation wise? Um, no, but I'm curious about, okay, the primer. So, yeah. okay, so now I'm, I'm 40. I just had my 40th birthday. Beautiful 40th. So, oh gosh, thanks. So, I have these things, you know, crow's feet and like, it just, it's just different. The skin is different when you're 40 ladies, just so you know, if you're not there yet. Oh my God. <laughs> and I got stuff here and I'm not getting the Botox, you know, I'm going all natural. So I've just got to live with it. But I'm wondering, will the primer kind of create a layer where the, won't, the makeup won't sit in okay. the Okay. So this is a big deal. This is another big deal. So there's this bone in your skull and it's called the occipital bone and it basically starts down here and goes above your brows and you can feel it if you put your fingers all the way around there is a different product for everything within that circle than there is for your face so when you're applying moisturizer primer foundation whatever it is stay away from this area here and just keep it on your actual face because in here you're dealing with a completely different um I guess layering or skin surfacing than you are on your face. So um, I remember somebody akined it to like, the skin on your body is similar to cardboard, the skin on your face is similar to a sheet of paper, and then the skin around your eyes is similar to a tissue paper. So you're just dealing with a, diff a whole completely different arena. But there, um, as far as that goes, I think I'll, you know, I will debunk the myth that there is some, that you cannot crave, like that there's something that you would find makeup wise that you wouldn't crave from. Um, but what I can say is a lot of the discoloration starts to happen in this area here. So that area is where you can conceal and you want to kind of use more of a pinker. If you're dark there, you know, you're dealing with purples and blues and some on some skin tones like greens, like on olive green. So all of that can be remedied with kind of like a salmon-y pink. You can take it one step down from your natural skin tone, so that way it kind of acts as a highlight as well. But if you stay within that pink, um, pinker realm, then that will help to actually camouflage. And then in this area here, your best bet is to stick with a highlighter. You know, and that can be a cream-based highlighter or a powder-based highlighter, um, but something to draw the light to it without creeping up full of um, product that you're trying to apply there because it will actually enhance the, the wrinkles. Yeah, I was wondering that because you look very like all of this looks really nice and light, like highlighted on you, um, which it's really nice. It gives you like perfect features. I mean, you probably just naturally have them, but I know makeup does a lot too. So, oh, um, <laughs> okay. So I'm so excited to learn all about these things. So one of the things I learned uh, recently from another friend of mine who's really into makeup. Um, was about the um, the cat eye because I always do I don't wear much makeup but I do wear mm -hmm. eyeliner and I always do the cat eye and she told me and I and I d didn't do it right today so I'm not a good example but she told me you really got to swoop upward towards mm -hmm. like, the end of your brow which seems like when you're doing it it seems really bizarre but I will say when I did it I it definitely opened my eyes and like lifted my face a little bit Absolutely. Yeah, it, it absolutely does that. And there's so many tricks when it comes to that. Um, you know, a good rule of thumb that I always tell people is um, when you're applying it, first of all, 
Like if here's your brush, um, get on, hold your brush like this or your pen or whatever it is. I'm, what I'm saying is like, get on top of it. You know, a lot of people will be like this, doing it in the mirror. That's a problem because you can't see where the line is going. So if you're like holding your, you know, keep your elbow up, keep your hand up and you're actually doing it this way, you're gonna be able to see where you're going. Um, another thing is tilt your head back like this and then draw from your bottom lash line up, you know? So that way you're, you're keeping it symmetrical to how your own eyes are anyway. If you have um, some asymmetrical eyes, then there's things that you can do to help that too. But ultimately just kind of keeping your head back, you know, holding up on your brush. So that way you're not like this. I see a lot of people going like, you know, well, how are you supposed to keep it symmetrical if your like, head's all over the place? It's hard to do. So, yeah. And how do you get your brows so perfect? Because I know that, like, you're not supposed to cut into a certain uh, an area, and then there's supposed to be, like, arcs in different places. Well, yeah. <laughs> I will say I started with caterpillars walking across my face as a kid. So I had a lot of <laughs> – a, a lot to work with over a large period of time, and I definitely did the, the chola thing where they were, like, super thin and high. You know, I didn't go as far as to Sharpie them, but, you know, I definitely had some, some uh, issues along the way. But um, there's a brow formulation, and anybody can Google it, and I can probably um, send you some information so that you can pass it on to everybody who's watching. But um, essentially, if you take a pencil or any long, skinny thing, like even a Starbucks stir, that's one of my favorite things to use, and you go up from, like, the side of your nose, you know, where you're basically right where the side of your nose goes and you just hold it straight up that's kind of where your brows should start and so you can kind of see i'm looking in my mirror i'm cheating so you can kind of see right here you know then using your iris as a stencil if you come and you go through your pupil and straight up that's where the highest part of your arch should be okay so if you're holding it at your nose you're always going to be using your nose as a base so you're gonna go like this, and then like this, okay? And then by the time the last tick mark you're gonna make is from your nose to the end of your eye and outward. So that's for your own personal face, how to custom where your brow, you know, where they start, where the highest point of your arch is, and then where they end. I have been brushing my brows while you've been talking, and I do think it's working. <laughs> It's totally working. I, can see it's working. I think it's a little bit more lifted. I'm actually going to get my brows done tomorrow. I get them waxed. So um, maybe cool. I'll have her fix that a little bit because that does look better. And then that's where makeup comes into play because you can yeah. like, make, you know. What do you color them in with? Oh my God, there's so many things. There's like powders, gels, um, pencils. So it's all a matter of like right now. Okay, so a while back, um, there was something called the Instagram brow, which was this very defined, very concealed, perfected brow that was filled in with a gel and it was like waterproof and you couldn't rub those suckers off. That was like, but that's phasing out and it's going more into a natural brow. And the natural brow movement is more taking your natural hair, brushing them up, using a gel so you can actually see the strands of hair and then taking either um, an angle brush, which is you know, those small little brushes that have the angles on them um, and they're flat and just kind of um, doing small strokes as if you were mimicking hair or doing that with a pencil and then just kind of using a brush. But it's going, it's the movement is going back more towards a natural brow. Um, and when I say natural, I mean kind of even a little bit more wild, not as perfected as it was. So it's okay. kind of cool. I'm totally in vogue and I didn't know. So, yes. um, so can you use eyeshadow as like, if I have a palette of shadows and there's one that's like a brown color, can I use that in my, my brows? Absolutely, I do, I do. And in fact, for what I do to my brows, on the bottom, you know, where I'm trying to create that difference between, you know, my shadow or whatever and then my brow, I'll use a darker one. And then towards the top, or if I wanna thicken them just a bit or create the illusion that they're thicker than they are, I'll step down like a shade or two and fill them in, but just so it's not so not, you know, so I don't have like, I don't look like Groucho when we start here. I'm kidding. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little unstable internet connection just for a second. You just got a little choppy, but, but you're fine. It was on my end. Um, okay. I live in the flight path and I think that 
the planes going overhead, uh, often knock my internet around a little bit. But um, so a, a last couple questions, I guess, that I have, and of course, I just want you to add any other tips that you want to share, especially for women, I'll say in our age group. So anywhere from like, you know, in your late 20s to your early mm -hmm. 40s is generally a lot of the women that I'm working with. And of course, there's changes in our skin, there's changes in our hormones, and we see that in our skin. So any tips you would have um, for that. But also, like, I always think of, um, you know, like you were saying, everyday women, I always think of these natural beauties, and they have this, like, dewy appearance. Um, is that dewy appearance because they're using, like, uh, like, a specific kind of moisturizer or highlighter or foundation, or is it like they're adding... Um, I don't want to say glitter, but I know like there's like different bronzers and whatnot that have that mica in it, I think, that makes it like a little bit lighter. Okay, so all of the above. So uh, this tip will tie into your question. So my tip is don't be afraid. I think the number one thing I've run across is people are too afraid of what other people are going to think about them when they are trying something new. And um, I think that's ridiculous because you'll either get stuck in a rut or you won't find your best VIP self if you are not out there trying, you know, whatever it is you can get your hands on. And a way to do that is take a, a fun Saturday with you and a girlfriend and go to Sephora and actually get your hands in things. Try things on the back. See how they sit with you. You know, um, try a moisturizer or a highlight on. Walk around the store, look at other things and see how it's set, you know, with you or try stuff on your neck, you know, that kind of a thing. Like make, make fun of it or have fun with it. Um, and when you do that, you might find lipstick colors or eyeshadow colors or highlighters or, you know, these kind of things that you wouldn't have tried before because you're actually going out and making an effort to do it. Um, and the doing part, you know, there's so much that you can do. So, um, some, you know, the tinted moisturizer, that's a big one. Sometimes just your own natural oils will kind of come out over the day and that can give you kind of that defined um, glow. For people that have drier skin or normal skin, um, you know, there's, there's uh, specific places that you can place intentional highlights. So like for me, I, I, this highlight is totally faux. That's not real. I could did that and the way that I did that was with a cream based highlight from MAC. Um, so they have about four different colors and, and you can go in there and they'll match match you up really well. But you know, just putting stuff down here on your cupid's bow to give you a little bit of a pound of your lip, um, on the bottom of your chin, that gives you kind of a glow. You don't want to do it everywhere because wherever you're applying highlighter makes it look wider. So you know, wider as in not white but wide. So um, you gotta be careful there, but, or above the brow, inner corners of the eyes, tip of the nose, all of that's gonna give you a glow. So if you started with a matte face, but you like, what, that's what I did. My foundation is actually a matte because I don't like the feel of oil on my skin. But you know, if you do strategic highlight points, then you're gonna end up having that glow. And you can do that um, with powders, you can do that with creams, you can do that um, you know, with specific lotions, and there are foundations like uh, Giorgio Armani has luminous silk. Um, it's a pricier bottle, but it goes a long way. And that specific formulation, it does wear like silk and it does have a little bit of mica that just gives you its own really pretty glow. So, yeah. Cool. Thanks. That's so helpful. Um, I'm actually going to MAC tomorrow, so I'm going to ask them to give me a highlighter now. Um, I have, yeah. yeah. I get my, I get two things there. I get my concealer there and I get like a mineral loose powder, which honestly, I have drier skin, so I tend not to use it as much, but I do find it good for setting. Like, if I have eyeliner on, it'll definitely get up here. So it like kind of, I put it on and it sets it. And then if I want a really even look, then I put it all over my face. But um, I And they to... have a mineralized, um, well, I, they used to when I worked there. I don't know now. But they had a mineralized actual foundation that had that mica in there with those real glowy aspects. That was really pretty. Oh, well, maybe I'll get some of that too. Um, okay. Yeah. So, Hey, thank you so much for sharing sure. your amazing expertise with us. If somebody is listening to this, cause I am going to put it on YouTube. If someone's listening to it and they want to find you somehow for any event or something, um, where can they find you? Do you have like a Facebook handle or an Instagram handle that they can find you at? I do. Um, my Facebook is Wendy Ray Makeup Design. 
My Instagram is Wendy Ray Makeup Design, or they can go to my website at www.wendyraymakeup.com. So I'm, I'm, all, I'm all there. And you, I do have a YouTube. I just haven't being mom and coach and makeup artist to my brides and my clientele. I just haven't had that. It has not been a priority. But YouTube's coming. It's coming. So it's and is it Wendy back. Ray, A R A E or R A Y? Yeah. R A E. Okay. That's point. what I thought. Yes. I got you, girl. All right. So stay on the line. I'm going to stop the recording, but I want to talk to you for a minute and find out more specifically for me because I'm selfish. So you guys heard it from here. You heard it from the expert. I brought you a detox expert earlier. I've brought you the expert on makeup. I mean, celebrity makeup right here. You can't get any finer than this woman. So um, thank you again so much. And goddesses, we'll see you back in the group.